Good morning to you. Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com here. It is uh, 3.30 Eastern Time and 12.30 uh, Mountain Standard Time or Pacific Time. I am in Phoenix, Arizona. Been out all day. Well, took a nap for a couple hours because I was friggin' tired, but uh, drove down to Ajo, or however you say it, A-J-O. I'll show you in a minute on the radar. I set up a camera up in Wickenburg. And uh, for those of you that have the Android version of Hurricane Impact, check it out. It should be working. Uh, we've done some things, and the Wickenburg camera should show up under the cams section, the live cam section, and, of course, for iOS as well. Uh, we're trying some things. Hopefully it's working. We'll see. Keep our fingers crossed. But been out for several hours tonight. Uh, some pretty heavy rain down near the Mexican border. I got down there to within about 40 miles of Mexico. Actually, I wasn't too far from the Gulf of California and the actual low-level center there of Rosa, believe it or not, uh, out and about looking to see if there was any flooding going on. A lot of ponding of water on the roadways, especially at low-water crossings, but the rainfall is not excessive just yet, so that's good news. So let's just take a look at things. I'm going to publish this. Uh, later in the morning, a few hours down the road, so you don't get a bunch of alerts at 3.30 in the morning. What What's happening? Why is hurricane track? Oh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to wait a few hours, and I think you can schedule it to be published later. So that's what I'm going to do. Anyhow, let's take a look at a couple of things uh, that are happening. This is Leslie spinning around, generating a few ace points. This is going to be something that we need to watch. Uh, this is Sergio, and we're going to need to watch this as well. So it's going to go over, and then it's going to come back, it looks like, towards this area, somewhere around there, several days down the road. And, of course, this is our current system, the remnants of what was once very powerful Hurricane Rosa. Now that energy is sloughing off, shearing off into parts of the desert southwest. And like I said, I'm over here in the Phoenix area. And we'll take a look at this in more detail as we go forward here. I'll try to anyway. So this is the radar mosaic, a nice big old picture of the radar for the lower 48 and elsewhere. And you can see that mostly it's southwest Arizona here that has the rainfall as of this hour anyway. Uh, and all of this will be moving off generally to the north and northeast with time. Well, that's like the worst arrow ever. And uh, no real heavy rainfall, just a steady rainfall. So we're getting some nuisance flooding, the low water crossings. Some of the washes will fill up. And then you're going to have these localized pockets, of course, with deeper convection. There's a few popcorn storms in there, perhaps. Uh, and then any of the areas with upslope flow over the mountain areas up here, um, maybe Prescott and some of those mountains, uh, in and around and north of Phoenix, could you know the southern facing slopes that can wring out some additional moisture. This is not going to be a horrible disaster uh, that we remember for years to come. But there could be some areas with heavier rainfall and a wash or a stream or a creek or a slot canyon or whatever that overflows and causes problems. I mean, it's just impossible to pinpoint where that could happen. Uh, but the good thing, this will bring uh, much needed rainfall to parts of the desert down here, especially the lower areas, the southern parts of Arizona. And the desert appreciates that, believe me. And uh, it smells like, like rabbit pee everywhere. It's just crazy. All the rodents that are out there and the they pee in the desert, and it doesn't do anything until it rains. And you can really tell. If you live out here, you know what I'm talking about. I've been out here a few times to witness that, and I never get used to it. All right, so that's the deal with Rosa. Um, yeah, Another day or so, and it'll be out, and that'll be that. I'll be out here until Wednesday night myself, and we'll see. There might be some more, I don't want to use the word excitement, because that... Typically, people think of that as a positive thing. Ooh, it's exciting. And, I mean, you know, flooding can be very dangerous, so I want to be careful in how I frame this up. But there might be some 
uh, periods of, of action, we'll say. And I'm going to be looking for that during the day on Tuesday. All right, so, hey, it's still hurricane season. This is a very interesting map here for October the 1st. That was just updated, the Noah Nesdis Anomalies chart. And let's use the color white, shall we? So you notice we're starting to get this El Nino look here in the eastern Pacific. Uh, and you know, it's warming. And so we are probably going to go into a weak El Nino for the winter. But it did not really do much to thwart the Atlantic hurricane season. It certainly didn't stop Florence. Florence was your it only takes one event and we still have a ways to go. And if you look at this, this is quite remarkable. Uh, a pretty, pretty big rebound here. Well, now I got the wrong color. I can't see it. <laughs> white on white. Um, you know, near the Azores, the main development region, generally warmer than normal. And then certainly this area through here, way above normal. Uh, normal, average, whatever you want to call it. And it's only October 1st. You know, we've got that secondary peak that usually comes around by the 10th of October each year. It's usually September 10th and then a secondary peak around October 10th. And then there's actually a third little peak later in November, early parts of November, I think it is. But it's a much less pronounced peak, but it's there nonetheless. Um, so this will be interesting to see over the coming months. What does this El Nino signature do? How long does this hang around? And, you know, all that anomalous cooling through here is pretty much gone. And you know, I don't want to speculate about next year yet, but we'll see, right? It's an interesting look for the Atlantic, a lot different than it was in June and July. So this is the text of the uh, tro Tropical Weather Outlook from Stacy Stewart. Uh, and we do have this area, 20% chance of development now over the next five days, down in the Caribbean. Uh, southwestern Caribbean, a couple hundred miles north of Panama. Okay, very important to note that. And I'm not picking on Mr. Stewart, but, I mean, I make mistakes. I just thought this was funny. That's not Panama. <laughs> um, it's okay. It's a KML file. It's all about how the plots get made, and it was just a goof. But the bottom line is... I know where Panama is, and Nicaragua, and Honduras, and Costa Rica. So the area that we're talking about is in this area, generally. And low uh, low pressure has developed, and we're going to need to watch this and see what happens. The models are starting to detect that something could develop. And you can see that right in here, the low pressure area. There's convection off to the east. But the actual low pressure area is right over here, believe it or not. And that being said, let me just show you the European tonight. All right, so that's the good thing about being three hours behind East Coast time. The Euro is finished. So I'm going to show you the next 10 days because I want to show you what we need to look for. This is very important. This is not the solution that's going to happen, hopefully. I mean, you never know, right? Uh, but this shows us the pattern that's starting to evolve. Okay, so then let's see how this plays out and changes and itself evolves over the next several days. So this is the initial condition, and just to give you a heads up on what's what, this is Leslie, don't worry about that. Uh, Mid-Atlantic states, there's North Carolina, Florida over here, you know, the Gulf Coast states, so forth and so on. Central America, South America. So we're going to keep our eyes on this region right through here. All right, so this is initial time, hour zero. Here's 24 hours out, 48, 72, and we start to see what happens. There's a broad turning. Look at that. You can clearly see this broad turning down around Central America. <coughs> Excuse me. Central America. I just need to breathe from time to time and... I could survive these without choking on myself. Uh, broad turning around Central America, that sort of gyre, we've heard that before. And so at 96 hours, a little bit more energy. And then in this case, at 120 hours near Jamaica, the European trying to consolidate something off to the east. 
I don't know if it's going to be this or if something's going to try to consolidate over here. Uh, I just don't know. Nobody knows. The different, there's different solutions from different models. This is day five. Day six, it's a little stronger there between Jamaica and Haiti, south of Cuba. And then day seven, over Cuba, and those mountains down there would just really put a dent in the system. And you notice at this point in time, very strong ridging once again over the western Atlantic. So it's not like something's going to be able to develop and then just head out to sea. It's trapped. Uh, so that's day seven. And if we look at day eight, and again, this is just to give us an idea. Okay, you know, we need to watch that. There's day eight, there's day nine, and there's day ten. Uh, I don't know if this is going to play out even close to this. There may be nothing right here at all. You never know. It could be somewhere over here. Uh, there could be, I mean, I suppose it could be out here, but this ridging that I'm seeing would certainly argue against that. So we're going to have to watch this. That's what this all comes down to. We have the players, so to speak. Just one more time, review. We got the players in place, all right? General low pressure, the patterns changing, going into a favorable Madden-Julian oscillation, so forth and so on. Uh, this system, Sergio, is going to move this way, and so there's nothing else developing back over here to compete with this, okay? So that's important to note as well. And then, of course, this has you know, been talked about on the Tropical Weather Outlook, even though the outline area is in the wrong spot. Here it is, your first sort of warning shot that we do have to pay attention. I'll draw the yellow myself for this area in here, and then we'll see where it goes from there. All right? All right. So, again, I'm in Arizona. I'll be here through Wednesday. Um, you know, I'll do whatever I can to document what I can. Uh, I'm not as worried about it as I was a couple of days ago. That doesn't mean there won't be some danger areas, and people certainly need to be careful driving, so forth and so on. But, you know, it's it's not the end of the world. At least I hope not. I get up tomorrow and everything's flooded. Sometimes that happens. I mean, Phoenix, weird things happen with heavy rainfall around here. You just never know. So I'm going to shut up and finish up and get to bed. Uh, like I said, I'm recording this when you should be sleeping so I'll publish it several hours later, and it'll still be valid and good. Uh, but I did want to get an update in. All right? And I'm done. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to go to bed now, and I'll talk to you again some more during the day, some point on Tuesday.